anyone have any good stories of a rude, unruly customer being silenced by either an employee or fellow customer? Story 1. When I was 21, I was waitressing at a high-ish end lounge and dining place. I had a table of 20 come in for a birthday party as well as a few tables scattered throughout the lounge so I was really, really busy. Everything was going really well until the 20 tops entrees came out and I realized I had totally forgot one woman's entree. She was really nice about the whole thing and joked that as long as her drinks were full, she could let it slide. I rang in her meal, asked my manager to discount it as it would be coming out later than all the other meals and went about my business. When my manager delivered her meal, he made a comment about how I was just retarded. I was at their table serving drinks and just rolled my eyes at him. He was a really horrible manager, would scream at the 16-year-old hostesses, punch walls during rush hour, and just in general be a huge spaz. When the meal was over and my table was getting ready to leave, they asked to see the manager. I thought it would be to compliment the food because they were all super happy with their meals. After my manager comes out of the private area they had been in, he's about 10 shades of red. He shoves a bunch of cash, which included a generous tip, into my hands and started yelling at me for throwing him under the bus like that. I had no idea what he was talking about. I later heard him telling the owner the ladies at the table had called him pathetic and a joke for treating a nice young lady like that. This table was livid, and apparently they tore him up for a few minutes. They also ended up calling the owner the next day to complain about my manager and say how awesome I was to them. Story 2. I worked at Blockbuster for two years and I had a particularly interesting experience. I was helping a regular customer who was obviously boy. Let's call him Adam. He was tall, well-built, and flamboyant. I finished his transaction and was beginning to assist a Hispanic family that was in line after him. As Adam walked away, he had one more question. What did you think of XX Movie or Oh, and by the way, loved XX Movie? Something along those lines. Happens all the time. So he came back to the counter and asked his question. The Hispanic father was not happy for some reason. He yelled at the, to get the fudge away from my baby girl. His daughter was around 12 plus. She came in a lot and she was well-spoken and well-educated. She instantly looked embarrassed that her father said this. The father was roughly 5'8", fat and not in great shape. Adam looks at him and says, The fudge did you just say? I gave Adam a look that said, Please just leave this unpleasant person alone. Adam got the hint, scoffed, and started to leave muttering something along the lines of, Not worth it. The Hispanic father took this as a sign to tear into this guy. He started reeling off some of the most hateful things I've heard ever. He even said, Doesn't want to fight me. He wants to fudge me, to his wife. Once again, I repeat, Adam is over six foot and built like a brick house. He grabbed the guy's collar and said, Let's do this outside where your daughter won't see. They are now yelling at each other. I jump over the counter and I'm pushing my way in between them yelling, I'm calling the cops. Chill the fudge out. I'm calling the cops. I'm 6'4", about 190, so by no means am I in a physically advantageous situation. All my efforts to separate them were futile. The Hispanic dad is just swinging recklessly while Adam is holding his shirt. Adam still hasn't even hit him, just keeping him at bay. Then out of nowhere, my favorite regular, let's call her Fanny, comes from the corner of the store and she is furious. She could hear the Hispanic dad being an unpleasant person, and she knows Adam pretty well. She is a 50-plus woman who rents movies every day. She sits in the store for hours, just shooting the cow, talking about the Lakers and Kobe and movies. She launches at this guy, furiously hammer, fisting him in the stomach, the head, the thighs, wherever she can. Adam lets go of the guy and Fanny just chases his peach out of the store. By this time, my store manager had called the police and she announced for everyone to hear. The daughter of the Hispanic dad looks mortified. I apologized to the daughter and gave her the movie she wanted for free, since obviously the father wasn't coming back to pay, and she was very sweet and apologetic for her father. Adam to the sky around and gave a statement. So did Fanny. We called our district manager and put a giant flag on the father's account. Haven't ever seen the guy again. I remind Fanny all the time of how much peach she kicked and how awesome it was. Story 3. I used to work at Walmart years ago in the electronics department. There were a couple of years that they were really lazy about getting help for the holiday season, so I wound up working many busy weekends by myself for a full eight hours. As the only one in the department, I'd have to run back and forth constantly, telling customers that I was the only one working, that I was very sorry they had to wait, and I would be with them as soon as I could. Most people were understanding and waited patiently while I worked my way over to them. Some customers would get pissy, and I'd always explain that there was nothing I could do, but they could speak to management if they wanted to voice a complaint. Most of the time, that would calm them a bit, but I'd usually have to listen to the obligatory, you should have more people, speech. Other times, people would swear and storm off. I'm sure that we lost a lot of sales that year because of the staffing issue. The worst customers were the ones that would come to my department 
to avoid waiting in the long lines up front. I didn't mind a handful of items, but when people would show up with entire shopping carts, it was a pain in the peach to scan everything on the tiny little counter we had. We were not allowed to turn them away, and it would nearly always work out that I'd have to check out two or three people in a row, meaning the other customers were waiting that much longer. One Saturday, it was particularly busy, and I had about a three- or four-person queue at any given time. Luckily, everyone was in a good mood that day and were incredibly patient with me considering they were all waiting about 15 minutes for me to help them. I was helping a couple pick out a digital camera for the grandmother, and since digital cameras were fairly new, they had lots of questions. Other customers would interrupt, but they all were waiting patiently after they understood the situation. At this particular time, I had another customer waiting for help with a camera, one waiting for a television, and about five people waiting for me to unlock the video game cabinets. Everyone was being super nice because they saw that I was doing my best, but still actually being helpful and cheerful with everyone. Two women walked up to the cash register with two shopping carts that were literally overflowing. They started unloading all of this stuff on the tiny little counter and shouted over they were ready to check out. I stopped helping the couple to explain that I was the only one there. I had others waiting, and I would be with them as soon as I could. They huffed but kept unloading their carts. Five minutes later, one of the women came over and poked me in the back, hard. I'm ready to check out. When are you going to be done? She snapped. I apologized, explained the situation again, and promised I would be over to help them just as soon as I was able. We've already been waiting 15 minutes. Can't you call someone? I said that there wasn't anyone else to call, that I was sorry and I'd be over to help as soon as I could. She said, well, it ain't right to keep us waiting for 15 minutes while you sit here and talk. You can just come check us out and come back. I tried to explain that it wasn't fair to the other customers to do that, but she wouldn't have it. Then the most amazing thing happened. The woman I was helping spoke up. We waited patiently for him to help us. He's the only one here. It's not his fault that they didn't schedule anyone else. The bad person came back with, well, it ain't right for him to be sitting there talking when there's customers that need to be helped. The other woman said, you're absolutely right, but he's actually helping me right now. Then the guy waiting for the television spoke said, and I'm next an asterisk boy, asterisk, do I have a lot of questions? The other people waiting all chimed in. And the woman said, well, I ain't waiting no 20 minutes to check out. The woman I had been helping said, ma'am, it's only been five minutes. If you're in that big of a hurry, why don't you go wait and line up front like everybody else? Then she turned her back on the bad person, picked up two cameras and said very loudly, can you explain the differences between these again? I seem to have lost my train of thought for some reason. The bad person and her friend swore loudly and profusely, but they shoved everything back into their carts and stormed off. I was stunned, but everyone that witnessed the situation told me to take my time and that I was doing a great job. I thanked every one of them and did my best to make sure they all got exactly what they were looking for. Most of them actually hunted down the manager and told him what a great job I was doing. Made my day. Asterisk, asterisk, TL. DR. Stuck working alone in busy Walmart electronics department during the holidays, woman tries to get me to help her first, instead waiting her turn. Entire department full of customers tells her to pour out the water off dot asterisk, asterisk. Story 4. I was probably about 16. It was one of my first jobs. The night before Thanksgiving and apparently everyone in a 10-mile radius was attempting to rent a video from us at the same time. Normally, Wednesday nights were so it was just me and one manager. She worked the floor while I was moving customers through the cash register fast as I could manage. Guy who had been waiting for a bit gets his turn and decides to start shouting about six inches from my face about what idiots we are, etc., and how he has places to be and shouldn't be made to wait. The line behind him turned ugly, and several customers started shouting at the guy to shut the fudge up before they kicked his peach. Guy turned red and walked out without renting anything. Story 5. My mother works at a library. She knows a teenage girl named Fatima, who does wear a burqa. The girl was always pleasant and always stopped to talk to my mom with her parents. One day, another customer was giving the group dirty stares as Fatima talked to my mom. When the girl left, the customer approached my mom saying, Are you crazy? You can't let her wear that in here. She could be hiding a bomb. My mother simply said, How do I know you're not hiding a bomb? The response, Tisk, you're ignorant. Story 6. Worked in fast food when I was in high school. Customer came in and only spoke Spanish. I studied German in high school. She started speaking in Spanish and I stopped her and told her I didn't understand. She was livid, shouting something in Spanish that I didn't understand. The cooks told me later that she was yelling about how every business is required to know how to speak her language and it was discrimination not to. My boss, the owner, comes out to see what the commotion is all about. After listening to the customer for about a minute, he said in Spanish, get out of my restaurant and never come back. She kept yelling all the way out the door. Story 7. 
I lost my own temper at Michael's I work in retail as a manager at another chain store, but was just standing in line waiting to pay for my craft gizmos while a lady came undone on the poor girl behind the counter. I couldn't take it, y'all. I stomped up to the counter and chewed her out properly. I called her disgusting and kind of generally flipped out for two minutes, then stomped back to my place in line. She hiccuped out, You're probably just like her. And I snapped back, As long as I'm not like you, the world is a great place. She was trembling, and so was I, and she tried one more time to gain her dignity back by saying, I have friends and people who love me, but I was still angry. I made some weird closing motion with my hand and said, I'm done with you. The next time I went in, the cashier told me I was a legend among the associates, and I was her personal hero. Getting to say all the things I can't say in my own store was very cathartic. The thing that bothered me most was that her manager came up to void the transaction and didn't help at all. I would asterisk, never asterisk, let anyone talk to my associates that way. Uh, still gets me all fired up. Story 8. As a nurse, my patients are my customers, so I have this story. At a home for patients with dementia, I tried to mobilize a patient to go to the bathroom, and she grabbed my hair and started to pull like her life depended on it. Too bad for me she was completely unreasonable because not only she hated strangers, she also did not like people. Ashamed to admit it, but I really was in trouble. The pose I was held in only gave me one option to escape, and hitting an old confused lady just isn't my style. But it was the style of some other patient. Don't bully the nurse! The granny you would least expect it of yelled while giving the granny that had me in lock a few blows to the face. The granny that had me in lock on started crying and let go of me. Once free again, my first job was stopping rescue granny of beating the SHT out of lock granny. Feels bad, man. At night, lock granny felt her face and said, Pain? Why do I have pain? Story 9. Some homeowner tried telling me off that I had messed up the brickwork on her patio when I was just trying to make the design that she and I had come up with together. My friend came over and was all like, well, you came up with the stupid idea. Why are you blaming it on him? What kicked me was that the bricks I laid became her favorite part of the house. Story 10. I had a customer that would harass me every time he came in my line and cashiering. Finally, one day a female customer behind him told him, leave her the hell alone. She is on the clock and forced to listen to you. How desperate can you be? I was pleased and thanked the customer for her aid in the situation. That guy was a creep. I know for a fact he had a wife and then would act totally sober when they were in the store with him. Story 11. I used to work at Starbucks in the city a few years ago. For all you Hockey Pittsburgh fans, Max Talbot was still playing for the Penguins at this point. This is relevant. Anyway, customers at Starbucks, especially in the morning, are complete assholes and very unforgiving. I guess everyone assumes I want to be there at 5.30 a.m. making cow money. This one morning, I had a customer who had an extremely specific order. I won't get into the details. He was a regular. But he had a specific temperature for his drink, 140 degrees. Some ex-current employees will say the machines can steam milk to a certain temperature on their own, and I know they do. But we didn't have those at the time. It was a manual thing, and you kept a thermometer in the pitcher of milk to see how hot it was. Needless to say, this guy was a nightmare because if you handed him the drink, he would pick it up and feel how hot it was in his hand, sip it, and if it wasn't right, he would slide the drink back to you, thus making the entire thing over again. This would hold up the line like you wouldn't believe, and you would pray to get it right the first time. So yeah, we're slammed busy. There's barely a line at this point, and everyone is gathered at the handoff area to get their drinks and run out the door to get to work on time. I look at my next drink in line, and there it is. That flipping dude's 140-degree drink, fudge. I was so tired at this point and just losing it. Too many people, too much shouting, too many people looking over my shoulder, and too many drinks to keep in my head while I multitask. I couldn't get the guy's drink right. He would slide it back to me each time. After the fourth time, he sips and it says, Really, guy? Come on, I'm in here all the time and you know how I order. Before he finishes the last sentence, I hear, Give the guy a break. Asterisk, asterisk. I look up and it's Max Talbot. He had his drink already and was walking out the door. But not before he told this guy off. Flipping awesome. Guy took his drink and just left. He stopped coming back in as much. Asterisk asterisk told her Max Talbot stuck up for me at Starbucks asterisk asterisk. Story 12. I work at an airport in the ground handling, check-in, and gate department. As a supervisor, I'm often called upon when my colleagues have already attempted to calm down the passenger as in question and failed, often miserably. I've come up with a few good ones myself, if I may say so. I remember a flight that was canceled. All passengers would have to be rebooked. Since we're a rather small airport, we only have one ticket agent at work most of the time. And she's unfortunately the only one who can rebook passengers, meaning that it does take a bit of time. She had something along 60 passengers to be rebooked. 
and one of them had taken up the best part of 20 minutes being a complete jerk, not wanting any of the options that my very skilled colleague came up with. She found him a connection that would get him to his final destination in the U.S. with a delay of just 15 minutes total. He demanded to be put on business class or he would report her. She said that he would have to report her, as she was in no way allowed to upgrade him under the circumstances at hand. He then digs into his pocket, flashing a USB recorder, telling that he's recorded the whole thing. At this point, I simply couldn't resist anymore, so I faced him and told him that if he intended to use that recording for any purpose, he would have had to advise my colleague when he started the recording, and that recording conversations for later use was a legal offense. This immediately shut him up. He asked for his ticket to be issued. Next day when I get in, there's an email waiting for me, thanking agents, MD, and SP, me and my colleague, for excellent service. Recently, we had another cancellation. The Supreme Court in Denmark recently ruled in favor of a passenger who had a ticket to a flight with Airline A, which was canceled, and who wanted to be rebooked to Airline B. The airline agent told him that was not possible, as rebookings would only be done within Airline A's partners. However, there has been no change of law or rule. So my colleague next to me gets this guy in a fancy suit, pointy suits, shades, the whole shebang. He starts yelling up about the verdict from the Supreme Court, demanding that all the passengers behind him in the queue be rebooked to next available flight immediately, once again at another airline, which we're not allowed to do as he was flying a low-cost carrier. I intervened to tell him that he was wrong, straightened things out on what the Supreme Court had ruled, and he left in utter silence, completely forgetting to be rebooked. I still take pride in the fact that I actually reminded him that he had not gotten a rebooking yet. My colleague actually bailed me out just a few days ago also. I had an entire line of people yelling at me due to a three-hour delay with no other aircraft available and no other flights to rebook to. My colleague then gets up and yells over the 80, 100 people in front of us. All those who want to be rebooked and have meal vouchers, please line up with my colleague to your right-hand side. That's me. All those who wish to yell and complain and have their rebooking done tomorrow, please line up with me. Needless to say, we had no further complaints. Also, another one of my colleagues told me a story from before my time at the airport. They had three departures within 45 minutes. Same airline, same destination. The check-in system had malfunctioned, so there were massive lines at the counters up till five, ten minutes prior to departure. No crowd control at all. Passengers just shoving and pushing to get ahead in the lines, even though it was announced over speakers multiple times that everybody would be checked in, and that aircraft would wait. So they managed to regain some sort of order in the lines until some jerk starts ripping up again, yelling that my now colleagues were too god -oh no slow and incompetent, asking for substitutions, etc. He went on for five, seven minutes before my colleague then calmly responded, Sir, the more time I'm spending listening to your complaints, the more focus I divide from my job, and hence the slower I am. Would you mind? From what I've heard, the rest of the passengers burst out into clapping. Story 13. My first retail job was at an entertainment store in a mall. We sold CDs, DVDs, video games, stuff, etc. We also had listening stations where you could preview any CD, and we had our own arcade. Needless to say, we were a hotspot for teenagers who had nothing better to do with their time. My mall was also a hotspot for the local juggalo gangs. There were two of them, and I never really knew if they hated each other or were pals. One was the Red Gang, the other was Purple, if that makes a difference. I could care less about ICP, or what teenagers did with their time, but these would just be plain loud, obnoxious, and obscene in my store. They never bought anything, and I didn't want to lose legit customers because of these fools. It would be one thing if these were cool and respectful. I wouldn't care if they to the sky out. But that was never the case. There were plenty of times I kicked them out of the store. I was always cool but firm about it. Anyway, after a few months of working there, I noticed less and less of these teens would loiter. I was talking to a co-worker about it, who told me that apparently, if the teens were passing by and saw me inside, they wouldn't come in. They called me the CD cop. I was never sure if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Story 14. I worked at Aldi's grocery store, and the duties were pretty rough. There is usually only one cashier on at a time, so we have to scan items very quickly, so it saves on having to pay more workers. Anyways, it was a poor job. The customers were pretty rude at times, and I worked in a not-so-great area. For a grand opening of one store, we had sent out $10 off coupons that had a calendar on them that highlighted the date in which they expired. It was a huge confusion because customers didn't understand what the calendar meant. And after they expired, we absolutely could not take them. The district manager explicitly informed us not to. So after about a month of them being expired, this uppity couple came in with one asking if they could use it. I told them that it had expired and why the date was confusing and profusely apologized. 
They were not having it. They kept telling me other places still accepted coupons after they expired and just were not taking no for an answer. They asked for the manager's name, and I told them, and they saying I was lying about my shift manager's name. I don't even know why they were mad about that. So I ring out my shift manager, and he tells them what I had said before about the coupons, and they still kept complaining at us to accept it, and were holding up the line. These biker gentlemen behind us stopping to get snacks on their road trip, right before 4th of July, busy peach day, were getting annoyed with this couple's incessant complaining. And one finally snapped and said, Hey, maybe if you didn't spend all of your money on stupid flipping handbags, lady, you wouldn't need to use that flipping coupon so bad. Move along. The husband tried to turn around and reply with some heated remark, but realized soon who he was talking to. They eventually paid and left. Story 15. Once again, my old part-time job at a butcher shop. It was closing time. We were cleaning the windows. My boss was a tight arse, so he made us serve every customer that came, despite pushing us to clean faster. We had just about finished cleaning when an Indian man came in and asked, well, more like mumbled for four kilos of chicken wings in two bags. With his strong Indian accent, that's what I thought he'd said at least. I'm not. But the Indians that came to the store were notorious for being extremely picky and not describing what they want properly. Anyways, I get the two bags of chicken wings for him. He says, let me smell the wings to make sure they're good still. Fair call, okay. Then he says, I want you to get stuff from the brand new boxes in there, and I want 1.5 kilograms a bag instead of two. It seems too much like this. They weren't bad wings, he was just being an arse. They were just as fresh as the other ones. They came in the same order. Nonetheless, I'm a nice guy. I go out the back and do what he demanded, despite me being a bit ticked off. I come back and weigh it up for him. I may have put it on the scales just a little harder than usual to show my frustration that it is now 20 minutes past my finish time since cleaning went overtime already. He says, don't get angry at me. You're the one who should know these things. I only want the fresh stuff. Just shut up and buy it already so I can go home. I reply in anger now. He just stands there staring at me, doesn't say a word at all, for about 60 seconds straight. Then, in a very soft voice, he says, I'll take it like that. It's fine, thank you. His manners finally started showing and he scurried off so quickly once he'd bought it. He seemed scared of me after I'd bitten back. I felt pretty big after that for a just-turned-15-Y.O. I don't know how I stayed there for another two years, to be honest. Never working with food again, the customers can be the biggest Nick pick out. Edit. 60 seconds, whoops, haha. <laughs> Story 16. I used to be a cashier for office supplies, and I used to wear makeup and put my hair up for work until I got so many sleazy requests from business executive types with wedding bands that I got sick of it. Keeping this in mind, I was not done up at all, in my glasses and one of those just get it done and go home days at work. We start getting the rush at lunch break, when some office people run by our store on their lunch break to grab whatever supplies they need and go back to work in time to eat. Some of these people are regulars who even call in ahead to warn me, so I get the items and check them out faster and let them enjoy their lunch more. So take this crucial time period that people get really stressed and then add the hero of our story. This guy, fully decked in suit, talking on the phone loudly as he walks in to declare his importance and says loudly, Yeah, Sheila, just got to the store. Call you back when they serve me. Oh boy, here we go. He immediately badgers my coworker, who is busy helping another regular customer get her binders from the very top of the shelves. She's on top of the ladder, obviously getting an awkward box down, and he goes, Can you stop being lazy and get me what I need? To which he gets an instant, Hey, unpleasant person, can't you see she's helping me? From the regular. He scoffed and wandered down to bother another floor associate. I chucked at the regular and gave her 10% off the binders. Now this isn't even what takes the cake. Take this same guy, and I'm now checking out a line of office employees who are obviously grabbing stuff for work on break. This guy was going to try to, until the lady who was supposed to be next shoved him back in line. He waited sheepishly until he got to the counter. Turns out he was getting the Southworth, HTTP, oh, specialty papers, Southworth.com, paper that is really just overpriced paper and has some BS that Lincoln wrote on their paper brand. He proceeds to talk this up as if he's hot cow and tell me how great his business was, etc., I roll my eyes and finish with the checkout and end with a, all right, you have a good day, hope to see you again. I should not have said that. He takes it as a signal, huh, oh, this cashier might be into me, and then stays at the register. So what are you into? I kind of go, uh, as the other customer is giving me the, wait, you. The fudge does this guy think he is look since he's blocking the checkout. I said, um, I'm kind of at work and there's a line and they're on their lunch break, to which the other customers nodded. And then he just moves one foot over so he's not blocking the checkout anymore. But directly behind my register still there. Don't you have work, unpleasant person? So is this a part-time job for school? I went to blah, blah, blah. I'm so important. I'm ignoring him. 
and checking out all the rest of the people in line, called for a backup cashier since the poor people were forced to waste their break on his nonsense. My only replies are, Mmm, oh yeah, um, sorry, I need to talk to her. The customers are obviously aware of this and giving me smiles and thumbs up where he can't see. Finally, the golden moment. Hey, do you have a boyfriend or something? Me. Yes, and that's not going to change for a long time. A female customer in line behind him is fighting back tears. Well, you don't have to be shy and lie to me, I finally snapped. Okay, you want the truth? He jumps up since I finally am directing my full attention towards his attempt. Yes. Basically, you leave yourself with two options with the truth of what I am telling. I could be telling the truth about having a boyfriend and just be wanting to stay loyal to HM because I love him. Asterisk, asterisk, or I could be lying to you and this is my most polite way of saying fudge off and stop flipping wasting my time and everyone's lunch break asterisk, asterisk. He was clearly speechless and further shame was showered by the clapping and hoots of the customers behind him. Fortunately, he never came back. TLDR, customer acts like his cow doesn't stink proceeds to bug me at checkout and waste everyone's time until I finally school him. No punishment, just tons of candy and soda bought for me by grateful customers. Story 17. I was on a flight to Japan. This guy beside me throughout the entire flight would speak only French to the cabin crew. Halfway through, he kept angrily muttering something in French to one of the stewardesses. The stewardess kept politely saying she couldn't understand. She tried to communicate with the passenger that she'll get someone who spoke French. Then, in perfect English, he started calling her a flipping bimbo and how it was amazing how a stupid worker like her managed to land a job. There was an awkward silence all around. Few seconds later, I believe the head steward comes and says to the guy, don't you ever speak to any of my staff like that, and the guy pretended he didn't understand what the steward said, played stupid. Finally, the steward proceeds to tell him off in French. It was beautiful. At the end of the flight, the guy beside me was escorted off the plane first. I regret not buying the steward a beer afterwards. Story 18. This story is not 100% mine, but here goes. Back in the day when I was still trying to get a job as a lifeguard, I volunteered as an assistant in swimming lessons. There was this one guard who I absolutely adored. She was one of my favorite people who worked at the pool by far. I tried to volunteer with her whenever I could, as she treated me more like a friend than an assistant and was very fun to be around. Let's call her A. One day, we were teaching a class in this lane when this old man swims up to us and starts ragging on A. You can't be in here. Let me talk to your manager. This is the water walking lane, a tells him, in a more pleasant roundabout way, to fudge off, because lessons have priority. This is certainly true since parents pay a lot more per lesson than people pay to public swim. Anyways, the crotchety old man talks to the head guard who comes to the lane, sighs and tells A to move into the other lane and share with the other instructor who was teaching there. Which, of course, is absolute BS. The patron did not need that much space and could easily have used half the lane since we were only using half of it. Plus, the other instructor was using full lane, so it was really difficult to coordinate. Obviously, A was livid. She had expected our boss to back her up and defend her from the verbal abuse. And instead, he only made it worse by giving the guy a sense of entitlement. For the next couple days, the same thing happened. Each time, A was given orders to give up her lane. And every time, she got angrier and angrier. I wanted to do something, but I was young at the time and had no idea what. Finally, someone stepped in. A male lifeguard, let's call him T, was on duty as the old man was railing on A. Instead of telling A to move, he told the old man to hop out and talk to him. The old guy obliged, probably thinking he was about to get his way again. Now look here, T said, looking the old man right in his wrinkly face. You are behaving absolutely appallingly towards this instruct. She is a woman and you can't talk to a woman like that. Were you to ask her nicely to share half her lane, I'm sure she would be happy to do so. But the old man tried to him off, but T was having none of it. You cannot talk to our staff like this. We are people too, and you need to be more considerate of our feelings. While I understand your complaint, you need to learn to compromise with other members of the public. And if you verbally abuse a member of our staff like this one more time, then you may be required to leave the facility. The old man became considerably more polite after this. I'm just thankful that he didn't complain to the head guard about T. He asked A to use half the lane, and we finally had a lane where we didn't have to squish in with a whole other class. T was in that moment, a true gentleman, stepping in for someone in need. I still know him to this very day. I don't know if he remembers what he did, but I remember what he did. I should thank him and tell him just how happy it made A that someone was looking out. Story 19. My friend is Muslim and wears a headscarf. So do all the women in her family. They went out to dinner recently and someone walks by and says something like, all Muslims are terrorists, in a very sly, indirect way. She then walks over to their table and calls the guy out. He says he doesn't know what she's talking about, then turns around, gets everyone's attention and says, 
Looks like we have a bigot eaten here with us tonight, everyone, and proceeds to belittle the guy in front of the entire restaurant. Management compete their meals. Story 20. When air cards, USB internet devices that use 3G service, came out when I worked at Best Buy, we were constantly running deals where you could get a free discounted netbook if you signed up for an air card. Needless to say, several individuals assumed they could trick us and return the air card and keep the netbook for free. Not the case. Anyways, a very fat woman with an ICP t-shirt and dreadlocks came in one Sunday morning to try and get us with the ad. $399 netbook for $49.99 if you sign up for an air card. She asks for the netbook. For $50, I say, you need to sign up for the air card over in mobile first. She argues and says, I was just going to return it anyway, so why can't I have the netbook? I was really confused, like, maybe I wasn't understanding her? Anyways, I said once again that the deal is only for those who sign up for a two-year contract with the Sprint Air Card. She proceeded to call me a flipping idiot and told me to find someone who knows what the fudge they are talking about. I didn't say anything in return. Walked away, looked at the senior in the department and said, your turn. Have fun. He walks up. She immediately starts complaining about me, calling me a retard amongst other gems. She tried to tell him how I was the dumbest person she had ever met. And he interrupted her with, Listen, Hanger Baby is probably the most technically knowledgeable individual in this store. He is far smarter than you will ever be. And he is not a retard. I don't appreciate you saying that in my department. She begins to steam and got very angry and tried to protest. And he just turned around and walked back to me. I gave him a high five, and we continued to play games on the touchscreen HP. As she was nearing the front of the store on her way out, she shouts, Flipping faggots! Good times. Story 21. I was working at a gas station when the pumps first started requiring zip codes for using a CC at the pump. It was a busy evening, and one of the regulars was in buying his smokes after getting to the front of the line. A customer comes in through the door and starts yelling about how we're trying to get her address to market to her, and she won't fall for our trap. Before I can respond, the regular doesn't even look at her and just says, Lady, can it? She gets a look like she had just been slapped and then blurts you, Fudge asterisk, you asterisk unpleasant person. He turns to her and while making a mouth with his, had that was synchronized to his own, he said, Blah, blah, blah. She turned around and left. I still regret not buying him his smokes that day. Story 22. A woman came into the ticket office, all set to pay for some concert tickets her daughter had reserved. It seemed like a pretty straightforward transaction at first, but things quickly took a turn. With a polite but casual air, she handed me her daughter's credit card, ready to pay with it. I looked at her, a little stunned, and tried to clarify. You want to pay with your daughter's card? She nodded, not sensing any issue. Now, as someone working in ticket sales for a while, I knew exactly what kind of trouble we could get into if we allowed people to pay with cards that weren't their own. Even if it was a family member's card, we were risking serious consequences. Credit card fraud wasn't something to take lightly, and our company had strict policies about this for a reason. I started explaining this to her as calmly as I could. Ma'am, I'm really sorry, but you can't use someone else's credit card to make a purchase. Even if it's your daughter's, we can't accept it without her being here in person. That's when things began to spiral. The woman's expression shifted from confused to furious in a heartbeat. Her voice grew louder as she accused me of being unhelpful and ridiculous. She went on about how she didn't see the problem since it was her daughter's card after all. She even tried to guilt trip me claiming that she had driven all the way down to the store just to do this and how her daughter was busy and couldn't make it. As her tirade continued, the line behind her grew longer and people started to get visibly annoyed, their patience wearing thin. I could feel the tension in the room rising, but I knew I had to stand firm. I tried to explain again, even softer this time. Ma'am, I understand the situation, but it's not something we're allowed to do. It's a legal issue. That's when she hit me with the question that nearly made me lose it. Who would even ever know about it? I paused for a second, unsure if she was serious. I glanced around the room. Well, besides everyone in line behind you, I said, motioning to the growing crowd of irritated customers, my boss would definitely know too. I pointed to my manager, who was standing just a few feet away, quietly running the register at the next station the entire time. My manager had been observing everything, and as soon as the woman turned to look, she stepped forward. Without missing a beat, my manager said, Ma'am, stop trying to get us to break the law and kindly get the hell out of my store. For a second, there was silence. The woman's face turned a shade of red I hadn't even known was possible, somewhere between embarrassment and fury. She mumbled something under her breath, grabbed her things, and stormed out of the store. The whole place seemed to collectively exhale as the door closed behind her. I glanced at my manager, who just shrugged, as if to say, What can you do? Story 23. I was in my senior year of high school, proudly serving as the drum major for our marching band, a position I had worked hard to earn. For those unfamiliar with band hierarchy, the drum major is responsible for leading the band 
both during performances and rehearsal. It's not just about conducting. It's about keeping the group focused, organized, and motivated. It's a lot of responsibility. And although most of my bandmates respected my position, there were always a few who didn't quite see it that way. Our band had a pretty diverse mix of personalities, as you'd expect in any group of teenagers. Most of the time, we got along, even if we occasionally bumped heads over small things, like who was out of step or which section was playing out of tune. Still, we were a team. But then there was this one clarinet player, let's call her Sarah, who had a bit of an attitude. She was a decent player, second row, so she wasn't bad, but she carried herself like she was too good for the rest of us. Sarah always seemed to have a chip on her shoulder, and it wasn't just me who noticed. She liked to challenge authority, especially mine. Now I get it. High school is a weird time for everyone. People are trying to figure out who they are, where they fit, and how they want to be seen by others. But being drum major meant I had to balance being a peer and a leader. I wasn't some dictator barking orders, but when it was time to get serious, I expected people to listen. On this particular day, we were out on the field for one of our regular after-school rehearsal. The sun was blazing, and we were all tired. We had been working on the same section of the halftime show for what felt like hours. Everyone was starting to lose focus, and tempers were running high. I was trying to keep the energy up, but it wasn't easy. We were about to run through the drill one more time, when I noticed that Sarah, as usual, wasn't paying attention. She was busy chatting with the girl next to her, giggling about something that clearly had nothing to do with music. I called out, All right, let's focus up. Sarah, can you stop talking for a second? We're running this from the top. She turned around and gave me this look, like I had just asked her to do the most unreasonable thing in the Then, with all the drama of a reality TV star, she said, Fudge you. I don't have to listen to you. I'm not going to lie. I was stunned. The field went silent. Everyone was watching waiting to see how I'd react. I felt the heat rise in my face, not just from the sun, but from the frustration of being openly disrespected in front of the whole band. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my cool. The last thing I wanted to do was lose my temper and make the situation worse. But before I could say anything, something unexpected happened. A trumpet player standing right behind Sarah, let's call him Jack, gently tapped her on the shoulder. Now, Jack and I didn't always see eye to eye. He was one of those guys who liked to do things his own way, and sometimes he pushed back against my directions but he wasn't a bad guy. He could just be a bit of a challenge to work with at times. However, at that moment, Jack became my unexpected ally. He leaned forward and, in a calm but firm voice, said, Yes, you do. He's your drum major. The way he said it, it wasn't angry or aggressive, but it was full of conviction. It was like Jack was reminding her, and maybe everyone else, that while we were all friends, there was a structure in place for a reason. We were a band, and part of being in a band meant respecting the roles people played especially when they were trying to help the group succeed. I could see the look of shock on Sarah's face. She wasn't used to being called out like that, especially not by someone like Jack, who was usually pretty laid back. There was an awkward pause, and for a moment I thought she was going to fire back at him, but she didn't. Instead, she huffed, crossed her arms, and turned her attention back to me, muttering something under her breath that I couldn't quite make out. Story 24. I've got the perfect story for this. So I'm in the checkout line. My stuff's already been bagged. I'm placing the bags in the shopping cart to bring them out to my car. This obese, red-faced woman starts shouting at the cashier one aisle over. The cashier is clearly new, wide-eyed, fumbling the scanner, mumbling apologies, etc. Bad person. God, oh no, hurry up! This is why companies shouldn't hire teenagers, and what have you, cashier. I'm so sorry, ma'am, I'm new, so sorry, etc. Bad person. Quit talking and do your job. All of a sudden. The cashier gets this angry look in her eyes. A fierce look crosses her face as she finishes bagging the groceries. So, what do I have to pay you? Bad person. The fierce look grows. About tree fitty. It was around this time that I, and the other customers in the store, realized the cashier was actually 80 feet tall and a Paleolithic-era sea crustacean. She bent her massive neck downward and snatched up the angry fat woman in one bite. That shut the bad person up pretty quick. Story 25. I had this couple come through my line who were regulars. They always made it a point to be very polite, but they are also very shy. And I should mention they are lesbians, though you can only look at one of the girls and tell. Anyway, they come through my line one day and I can tell that the girl who dresses a little boyish is in a bad mood. Very odd, but whatever. I start ringing up their groceries and she says she forgot something and runs back for some chips. She is only gone for a few seconds, but I hear this group of about 620-ish-year-old idiots talking loudly ask she comes back. I noticed them when they first came in and could tell they would be annoying. Now she really looks pissed. Then she moves to where she could see them BC. At this point, the guys are at the beginning of a closed-off register. We have Reg 2 running I am on Reg 4. These guys are at the beginning of Reg 3. 
She says, if you have something to say, say it to my face. That is when my head snaps up from ringing up items, and I think fudge. And one guy says, the fudge did you say? Girl, you got something to say, say it to my face. Her GF pleads for her to calm down, and I'm silently agreeing. I mean, it's six guys plus if you drag me into this, I'm boy. And it's sort of obvious if you're semi-looking for it, which they are, and now they're shouting boy slurs. I finish their order, and her GF is still trying to get her to stop the shouting match, when out of nowhere I hear, that's a woman, and you don't talk like that to a woman if you're a real man. Straight girl with her BF on Reg 2 has now joined in, and me and the other female cashiers and all looking at each other like, great, when do we call the manager BC? The dudes may try something if we misjudge this. They shout, we ain't talking to you, bad person as the sapphic girl gets ushered out by her GF. Now we have a new shouting match. The girl's BF is trying to calm her down while still telling the guys to not call his girl names. The guys are calling her every name in the book, and she is returning he favor. I call for manager assistance up front. The BF starts to usher his irate GF toward the door with the help of a cashier. And then I see the guys heading for the couple. I grab my intercom and state, Mitch, we need assistance up front immediately. The guys meet the couple in front of the registers, and the BF is forced to push one guy away. BC, they are trying to flipping start a brawl. Girl still shouting, Y'all are just a bunch of flipping boys, you don't know how to treat a woman. Then, the woman takes a swing at one of the guys, and that's when my manager runs out of nowhere and catches her arm and gets between everyone. The couple leave immediately, but the guys think they can just go back to get checked out now. And my manager says, Guys, I don't think so you are leaving. One says, the bad person started it. We didn't do anything. That's when Lou, our bodybuilder stock, shows up and states calmly, we don't care who started it, but either way you guys are leaving. One look at him, they left flipping crazy. Even though they didn't get silenced, that woman sure as hell had us some balls and said what needed to be said, hopefully it sunk in. Doubt it. Story 26. I was always terrible at dealing with customers in general as a retail restaurant employee. Ergo, I honestly think most customers picked up on it when they started talking to me that A. I wasn't going to be unconditionally nice to them B. They weren't necessarily going to get their way when dealing with me C. I can be a huge banana This ties in with A, but it needed mentioning Ergo, I never really had a terrible customer I guess if I sensed anyone getting heated with me, I shut it down pretty quick and just told them to GTFO No, I don't work in retail anymore and I'm much better off for it